without going into too much detail, uh, I understand being extremely blessed. It's not because I got millions of dollars in the bank. But victory is mine. Just like it's mine, is yours. But you have to make decisions to maintain and walk out your freedom when it comes to your finances. You can shout, you can decree, you can speak those things that are not as though they are. You can do all that old lingo. But after you do all that, you got to be obedient. You got to be disciplined. You got to sow and you got to plant your seed in the right ground so they can produce. My God, but for some of us, we are walking and living in complete financial victory. It ain't just words. It ain't just fleshly emotions. It's substance and truth. And I know that God is able. I know as a young man that God is able. I'm going to set that right there. But some of us ain't just shouting and in debt. Some of us are saying God got the victory because we are on the other side. And we are walking in total financial freedom. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Mm. Amen. So while you're standing, that's why only a few claps, and that's okay. But I want you to understand, I believe in teaching you right. After you decree a thing, you got to live a thing. And he has told you how to get financial freedom. And the number one thing is called self-discipline. Knowing when to and when not to. It's real simple. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalms, the 27th chapter, starting at verse number 7. When you have it, please say amen. amen. I, of course, I'll be reading from the In New Living Translation. And it reads, hear me as I pray, O Lord. We finishing up from last Sunday. Be merciful and answer me. Some of us is right there saying, God, please hear me. I'm desperate for you, God. Verse 8 says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. See, you got to come. You got to do something other than clap. Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Verse 9 says, do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper, David says. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. Oh, God of my salvation. Even if my father and the mother, listen, 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 have abandoned me. Some of y'all can identify with verse number 10. The Lord will hold me close. Sometimes people, God got to allow people to walk out so he can walk in. Verse 11 says, teach me how to live. Okay, lifestyle. We understand that at this church. Oh, Lord, lead me along the right path. For my enemies are waiting for me. Quit thanking everybody, your friend. Do not let me fall into their hands. For they accuse me of things I've never done. That's to be expected, David says. With every breath, they threaten me with violence. You got some haters, that's okay. Yet I'm confident, David says, in spite of everything, that I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Quit all that old... The late Dr. Miles Rowe talking about that escapism gospel. Escapism. That we're going to have joy and peace and victory and all that when we get to heaven. No, 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 no. God gave us, according to Genesis, dominion right here. Yeah. I don't need to wait till I get to heaven to experience peace and freedom and joy. David says, in spite of all that, Scooter, I know and I'm confident that I'm going to see God manifest heaven while I'm here. I started this say I'm boasting I'm leaving it alone <laughs> I'm confident somebody say I'm confident but then he shifts to verse 14 in my clothes and wait patiently uh, if you're going to see some things you're going to have to wait some things you're going to do immediately but other things he's going to train you how to wait patiently for the Lord be brave though David says while you're waiting and be courageous have something about you men and women be courageous yes wait patiently for the Lord. Lord, thank you. I feel this one, God. Mm, thank you, Lord. Bless and empower. Let your kingdom fully manifest. When the kingdom manifests, God, that means miracles take place. Emotional and mental healing take place. 
We release stuff that's been holding us captive for years. We need your kingdom to manifest. Thank you. Now give me an opportunity to bring you to the people and bring the people to you. And then get me out of the way. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm just going to rehearse a little bit and chop this up as we move, my God, and finish point one, my God. But we're here at a point where David, as I told y'all last week, is at a point of no return. It's the title of the sermon, at the point of no return. Uh, if you want to catch up with point number one from last week's sermon, my God, you can do so by going online and to YouTube. But we are at a point of no return. David as well, and many of us today are at a point of no return in certain areas of your life. I want you to understand something. You can have victory in one, ever, one area and be ready to lose your mind in the next area of your life, my God. That's why it's so important, my God, to give laser focus attention to the areas where you know you're struggling, where the areas where you know you're unhealthy at. Don't let the enemy allow you and I, I and you, to focus on just our strengths. We got to pay attention to those doors. We got to pay attention to that area, my God, where the enemy, watch my verbs, are flowing in and out of our lives. I said flowing, flowing in and out of our lives. Them are the doors that you have to shut. You got to stop the flow of the enemy coming in and out of your life. Mm. And so we have David, my God, in a cold-blooded place. Oh, but David is yet holding on to his faith. Some of you uh, have let go of your faith. You have let go of being courageous. You have let go of really trusting God with anchored faith and anchored trust. Well, I come to encourage you today that in the midst of everything that you may be facing, you can yet hold on. Do I got a witness out there? So I want to tell you, my God, to don't give up. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I'm looking around uh, uh, the country and I'm talking to people. And I was talking to Bishop. He's in Dallas right now. And we begin to talk. And I asked him the other day, as I told you last week, give me a pulse. Give me a pulse for what you're sensing in the nation because he travels the world, my God. And he is in agreement, my God, not because I'm his spiritual son, but because it's truth. The condition of the body as a whole worldwide is in a tough place. There's a lot of compromising, a lot of habitual sin, and a lot of turning away, my God. Even from the pulpit, my God, the pastors and leaders are not reverencing and honoring the pulpit. They're preaching one thing and living something else, my God. We have lost our reverence, my God. So Bishop said, you know what? God has put, put on my spirit, my God, him talking, that we're going to do a pastor and leaders encounter, my God, next year. And so, my God, we're going to... And when, he, and when he told me that, my God, one of the things, my God, that I'm going to take out a session and I'm going to add a session. And the first session I'm going to add, add is returning back to your first love. Many people have left their first love. Some of us have left our first love because we have hit a point of return, our breaking point, And instead of us going over, we went back. And we have lost our first love. Our left, our first love. I can tell you, you can have all the external. You can do all the quoting the scriptures. You can do all that. But God knows if he's interlocked with you. God knows if he's interlocked. So I'm just interlocking. It can't be. It's fused together. You got to actually rip me in half to get me to separate. Same thing with marriage. When you say you are doing your covenant, when you divorce, you rip one another in half, the late Dr. Miles Monroe said. Serious. The institution of marriage. God is married to you and I. Uh, no condemnation for those who have divorced. That's not what I'm saying. Hear my heart. Understand the spirit. Come up. I felt y'all come up. So point number one, my God, I'm just going to give you the, the, the point, but then I'm going to talk a little bit about it, and I'm moving on. But in this context of the story, David was at a point of no return, I feel. My God, he was at his breaking point, like many of us today. Like I said, you can have victory in one area and be at a breaking point in another area. But one thing about David, my God, number one was David desired that his prayers be answered. He desired that his prayers be answered. Write that down because I got some work to do from point number one. But in the midst of that, as I told you last week, Jonah was at a point of no return. Hannah was at a point of another of no return. And then Jesus, our Lord and Savior, key word, Lord and Savior. Uh, that's another sermon right there. Well, I'm going to leave that alone. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Jesus was at a point of no return. He was at his breaking point. And in his flesh, as I told you last week, he said, uh, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Uh, but then he tapped into the spirit, man. That's why I talked to foundation class this morning. He tapped into a spiritual man by God and draw strength and said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When you're at your point of no return, when you're at a point of your breaking, uh, you got two options. Either you're going forward or you're going backwards. I want to encourage you for those that have came to a point of no return or a breaking point and you have somewhat went backwards. God is trying to pull you back forward. Thank God that he didn't allow you to die in sin or die in your mess when you decided to disconnect from him. So he said, we have so much to be grateful for. But in order for your prayers to be answered when you're at a breaking point and when you're at a point of no return, you got to do these things. So write these down. You know, I like to teach you. You got to be persistent. Write that down. When you're going through H-E-L-L, -L, you got to remain persistent. Oh, my God. You got to remain persistent. It's not a time to give up on God. It's not a time to go backwards, Pastor Sharon, Sister Sharon. It's time to push forward, my God, and remain persistent. Because I want you to understand, so when we're dealing with that weight room and them weights, like I told you last week, you got to push past your sweet spot. You got to, uh, I had y'all in mind, uh, and I was talking to Brother Brandon, my God. He said, you got to push past eight. You need to get 10, 11, and 12 now. And so I was pushing this week in the gym. I was pushing. I was getting 11, baby, and I was getting eight. I mean, nine and 10. I was pushing. I told y'all, my God, I got to push past my sweet spot. And I wanted to be able to stand on this poop and tell y'all, this week, when I was in the gym, I pushed past eight, and I was getting 10, 11, and 12, and I'm telling you the truth. Who my God, I know that. All you got to do is look at it. I can't get nobody to say that right now. But you got to be persistent. You got to be persistent. Let's put some context on this. According to Psalms 27, verse 8, David says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, this is mine, and my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. De uh, God, God's face, Lord, I'm coming. God's face indicates his personal presence. Write that down. Uh, we got to get past the outer court. We got to get past outer court worship. Outer court worship is when, my God, this is outer court worship, y'all. I'm lifting my hands because I'm instructed to lift my hands. You got to get to the presence of the Lord. When you get to the presence of the Lord, when you get to the face and the presence of the Lord, my God, don't nothing else matter. Everything around you, even though you're in a physical ceases, and all you want to do is commune and sit with the king. And you want to love on the king and you want the king to love on you. So David said, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I respond. I'm coming to your presence. When you're at the point of no return, you got to go to God's presence. You're not supposed to go backwards. You're not supposed to turn away. You're supposed to go to God. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom. Who, my God, you got to seek God in the midst of the point of no return. You got to seek God when you're in the midst of a breaking point, my God. You got to stay persistent. But persistence is a mindset. Don't you know you can talk yourself out of being persistent in the midst of what you're going through? But it's a principle, my God, that you and I need to adopt to move forward if you're going to cross over and get past that breaking point. Because on the other side of that breaking point, on the other side of that point of no return, there is a blessing. So don't get to the point of no return and turn away from your blessing. Everything that you have prayed for, everything that you have fasted for, everything that you have gave up, my God, in the first sight of resistance, you quit. You ask God, my God, to prepare you for your assignment. You ask God to prepare you for your calling. My God, don't you know, can I tell you that when you're asking God to implement his will in your life, that there's things that he has to execute in your life? There's things that he has to do in your life, my God, to honor your prayer where you say, God, I want to be more sanctified. God, I want to perfect my gift. God, I want to know more word. God, I want to have a better prayer life. God, help me to forgive. Don't you know he got to use things and situations, my God, to, to bless you and answer your prayer? So why when we pray and ask God for stuff, when he start executing, when he start implementing, my God, and releasing the kingdom, my God, to answer your prayer, why do we quit? Yeah. Why do we get frustrated? Why do we start complaining? I know it's heavy. It's heavy. Think about it. We pray and ask God for everything, but when he start doing stuff that we don't understand in our natural mind, we quit. Uh -huh. We get frustrated. We say that ain't God. Can I tell you that a lot of trouble and turbulence that you're experiencing, that's God. God works in trouble. God works in circumstances, my God, that you and I don't understand. So quit running from the turbulence. The turbulence is good to a real Christian. 
So in the midst of that, my God, my God, as I taught y'all, my God, storms locate your faith. And you can't say you got faith when you ain't got no storm. Uh, show me your faith in the midst of a storm. See what I say, but can you stay persistent when all hell has come up against you? Can you stay persistent when God didn't get quiet and he ain't saying nothing as I've been teaching y'all? Can you pray persistent when you don't understand? Can you be persistent when you don't understand? My God, the hand of God moving in your life. Can you stay persistent? It's the key to your prayers being answered. God may be trying to teach some of you, my God, to be persistent now because when he's taking you a part of your assignment, you don't consist of you staying down and not quitting on God. I told one of my sons, my God, he's sitting here. I said, you and I don't get to. We don't get to quit on God. There's too many people that need our story. There's too many people that need what we come out of. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't try to try to fit in. We ain't the traditional people, the traditional pastors and leaders, because there's a whole river of people that certain pastors can't reach, but we can. So you don't get to quit. And neither do you. Because there's people that's assigned to your life that I can't reach, that you can reach. So you got to stay persistent. As I taught y'all, people need to see how you go through stuff. When people watch how you suffer, watch how you go through stuff, it builds credibility. If you can't go through nothing, nobody want to submit and follow nobody. Ain't never, they can't go through nothing. They see you praising God when it's all good, but as soon as trials hit, then you acting all crazy. They're like, oh, no. You discredit yourself when you do that. So David, in the story, stayed persistent. You know, I like to teach. So David stayed persistent. What have you, what have you given up on that God may have been using to develop you. What have you taken and set down? Said that ain't God, cause it's turbulence, cause it's painful. It's gonna require that I pray a little bit longer. It's gonna require that I open up their book, you know, trying to say and find out what God is trying to say to me. What is God saying to you that you don't think that he is God? You might wanna write that down. What is God saying to you that you think that is not God, but it is God? Because God speaks through circumstances. God speaks through situations. So many of us are at a point of no return because God is trying to build the spirit of persistence in you. Are y'all with me so far? Come on, talk to me. Are y'all with me? Oh, my God. David talks about seeking the face of God. My God. Uh, his face is a primary characteristic. Seeking his face is a primary characteristic of true believers. Seeking God's face in the midst of, of a point of no return is a primary characteristic. My God, when the enemy is attacking, we go harder. As I've taught y'all, when the enemy strike, we strike back. Oh, you don't get to retreat. Let me help you with something right here. Side note, do not retreat back to the familiar are the caves of abandoned hopes and dreams, my God, because you are going through trials and tribulations. Do not retreat back to the familiar, the caves. David ran to a stronghold for protection, but our caves nowadays are prison, not physical prison, prison in our mind, putting up walls to keep the enemy out, but we're really in prison in ourselves, behind the very walls that we put up to keep somebody out. So don't retreat back in the midst of a point of no return. Don't retreat back to the familiar. You got two options. You go on the cross or you stand on the other side of the Red Sea. Which one are you going to do? You're going to push forward and push forward into your purpose? My God. Because many of y'all, y'all understand your purpose. Guess where your purpose at in Canaan? So this is Egypt. That's the wilderness training and in Canaan. In order for you to get your assignment, under you fulfill your purpose, you got to push past Egypt. You got to push past training and you got to reach and you're going to have to reach. You're going to have to reach. You're going to have to reach to obtain your assignment. You're just not going to walk into your assignment, baby. You got to fight. You got to labor. You got to reach. Because a lot of our assignment, even though God put it in us, is right here waiting on us. But there's training. Egypt represents the world. The, uh, the wilderness represents training. And then Canaan represents freedom. God is, some of us is in the middle of training right now for preparation for freedom. Freedom, your assignment is right here. Your destiny, your dream right here. God is trying to prepare you. Thank you for catching this, son. God is trying to prepare many of us for the assignment that's in freedom. A lot of what you need now, see, some of y'all have graduated from Egypt. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You graduated from that, and you then went through some training. That next importation, that next breakthrough, that next miracle is in freedom. You got to go over here and get it, baby. See, when they was in Egypt, he took care of them. He fed them. When they went to training, wilderness, he took care of them. He fed them. He fed them through Pharaoh in Egypt. Then he fed them through, through mama from heaven and water to, to, a, to, a, to a rock. He took care of them. But when they got to freedom, he's no longer providing for them. Now they got to believe for him. 
I'm heavy right now. Over here, he, see, some of you, oh my God, you got to recognize what stage you is. Right, right here in the wilderness, my God, he provided everything for them. But when he got to freedom, when they got to freedom, now he's not going to provide. Now you got to believe God. Faith. God's trying to train you through the different phases. Egypt, you're lost. Pharaoh's taking care of you. Many of you that's been walking with me for some time, you're over here in training now, and some of us is in freedom. But over in freedom, you got to have faith to receive from God. He ain't going to give you everything from, the rock, from a rock, and he ain't going to bring food down from heaven. you got to believe God for everything you need over here. Oh, it's a different level of responsibility that God's going to hold you to over here. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give. Oh, uh, my God. So when God stopped giving you water, when God stopped giving you mama, my God, will you stay persistent? Would he still be God when he stopped and shut the heavens and said, now, by faith, you're going to receive. See, I proved myself to you and took care of you when you're in Egypt, but now you got to gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, uh, receive from me by faith. You got to use your faith to unlock the resource of heaven, my God, when you're in Canaan. That requires a different level of instruction and a different level of relationship with God when you get in freedom. He provides everything for you in them two stages. Over here is by faith. I'm redundant, but you need to catch that. Because some of the things, my God, that we need from God is over in freedom. But we, one foot in training, Egypt, and one foot in freedom. If you're going to get everything from God that's, that, that you have left, my God, you got to cross all the way over into freedom. And you do that through being persistent. And then here's another thing, my God. Write down the word unchangeable. You got to understand in the midst of a breaking point, in the midst of a point of no return, that God is unchangeable. Okay, you don't believe me. Psalm 27, 9 and 10 says, do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper, David says. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God, of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord hold, will hold me close. Even though things around us are changing, we know God is the one constant thing in our life. Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my God. God is the same day after day. He is not a man that he should lie, believe us. And if he said it five years ago, he means it today. God is unchangeable, and he's always there. You know why God is able to say, I will never leave you nor forsake you? Because the Bible says the kingdom of heaven, Amber, is within. And if you are born, a born-again believer, and you have accepted Christ as first Lord and then Savior. See, Lordship is accepting his position. Savior is accepting his works. A lot of Christians have accepted his work, but they have not accepted his lordship. Oh, I'm way out there, baby. Who did you catch that woman of God? Lordship is the position. He's God and he's God all by himself. Savior, that means I accept what he did for me on Calvary. And many Christians is a Savior, but he ain't Lord. Lord means I give up my rights. The same thing, my God, forsaking all others. When I said I do to my wife 20 years ago, forsaking all others, my God, she become Lord in my life. My love is exclusively for her. That's lordship. Ownership. You got to understand that God is unchangeable. Storms change. Get in the boat and cross over to the other side. All of a sudden, a storm abrupt happen quickly. Storms come. Storms happen. But God is steady in the storm. And when you anchored in God, you got to learn how to be steady in a storm. Because you know why? My God, it's not because of something you do, because of something he did. He said, rest, I got you. I'm not going to never leave you nor forsake you. And sometimes as I've taught you, God creates storms to train you. He creates storms to build your faith, to build your trust. See, we need to understand that, my God, as I told you, the Bible says in Psalm 119, it was good for me to be afflicted. It made me fall more in love with you. It made me more dependable upon you. Come on, somebody. Uh, it's at another level. So, my God, how many of you understand that God is, is an unchangeable God? Some of you find it hard to believe because you have seen stuff happen and you don't understand. Here's the thing, though. Have you went to God fully in intimacy to try to get him to under explain to you why he allows something to happen in your life? Or have you dealt with God about that situation from the outer court? See, God is cease speaking to you from the outer court. God is trying to bring you to the holiness of holiness. Well, I'm trying to grow the church, man. Trying to bring you to another level of relationship with him. He going to speak to you different. He ain't going to always speak to you the same way. God's character, my, who, my God, his methods, my God, and things change, but his nature and who he is never changes. He's unchangeable. He's a rock. Who, my God, if he said it, yeah, if he brought you to it, he can bring you through it. Mm-hmm. 
He's able to say all things working together for the good. Paul said that through God, all things are working together for the good. You got to have anchor trust, and you got to know that God is unchangeable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. David did, David did, David did. Also, you're going to need instruction. I'm moving. You're going to need instruction. You're going to need instruction. Write that down. You're going to need instruction. We need instruction, David said in the Psalm 27 and 11. It says, teach me how to live. Oh, lifestyle still matters. Make sure y'all post that Christian, that lifestyle still matters. Oh, Lord, lead me along, David said. In the midst of my breaking point, look what David said, champ. Lead me along the right path. See, he still wants to be connected. He still wants to be in order. See, many of us get out of order when we're going through stuff. Uh, we, 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 we tend to take matters into our own hand. We start formulating false perceptions about stuff. We start, my God, we start getting on the other side of the situation and start gauging stuff from the wrong perspective. Come on, somebody. Oh, David kept the right perspective, my God. Oh, keeping the right perspective in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a hardship is very critical to you staying properly connected to the vine. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Ooh, this is heavy right now. My God. Mm. Oh, my God. But you need instruction. David had a lot of enemies around him, and he realized that he needed a word from the Lord. Many of us today, including the one preaching, my God, we need to know what God's instruction is concerning our assignment, concerning our future, concerning our next step. David said, I'm one step away from death. <laughs> David said, I'm one step away from death. And so I need God, my God, to instruct me. I need God to guide me. I need his word to be a lamp, my God, to my feet. Because many of us walking in a landmine, and you step on the wrong thing you're going to explode so you need God to navigate you through this landmine called life Ooh, Lord and so you need instruction How do, you, you can't get an instruction just listen to me for an hour ah, let me teach y'all something for those that heard me say it you got to flip these pages yeah see listen to the sound shh You got to flip the pages. See what I'm trying to say? And that's how you get instruction. Can I help you understand something? I'm trying to teach you, my God. In, in the midst of what you're facing, you need biblical instruction. You need a sound word from heaven. You don't need everybody's opinions. Oh, my God. You don't need people's perception, my God. You need a fresh revelation from God. And the only way you get that, you got to go to God, baby, and quit going to people. And then when people give you inaccurate information, my God, now you offended at them. So God created this stuff so you could come to him to get instruction, but you go on everybody but him. In the midst of a breaking point, in the, point, in the midst of a point of no return, who are you going to? What are you going to? Who are you depending on? What are you depending on, my God, in the midst of what you're going through? Who are you running to? What are you running to? Are you going back to Egypt? Egypt makes it represents club, pornography, masturbation. Y'all know all that mess. I don't even want to talk about that. I'm sick of that, my God. What are you running to, my God, in the midst of what you're going through? By now, you should be running to God. By now, my God, your first thought is, my God, I'm fist to pray. I'm fist to fast. One of the brothers said, Pastor, I want to meet with you. I told him I'm going to fast, but I can't deal with you. I got to get to you. You got to be next to me. I'm in the presence of the Lord right now. I ain't got time to talk right now, baby. I'm, I'm carrying on a great work, and I got to get it through fasting. I'm just trying to give you some instruction. Thank you. Some of you need a word from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a word that can make sense to what is happening to us right now. I don't need all that jibber jabber. I don't need you quoting scripture. Oh, my God. And if you don't know how to get it, Google it, whatever you're going through. Financial pressure, Google for all scriptures on financial. If you're desperation, Google desperate. I mean, come on, somebody, find out. <laughs> open up the Constitution. <laughs> oh, my God, come face to face with God. When you open up God's word, you're coming face to face with the true and living God. Oh, my God, you can't survive without mm, feasting on the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. I need a word. Look at your name and say, I need a word. But see, it's one thing to get a word. It's another thing to do something with the word once you get it. See, many of y'all, they got a word about your situation. You just don't want to be obedient. Obedience is better than a sacrifice, my God. When you get a word, you got to obey the word. Some of us stay in situations longer than what we're supposed to because we won't implement. That means apply what God told us to do in the Constitution. I ain't got no prophecy. What the word say? That's the prophecy. Trying to build a church so you can be anchored in these last days. Many of them is turning away. Everything that's clapping, everything that's shouting, everything that's quoting, they anchored. A whole lot of compromise and sin going on all around the nation. 
I'm trying to make sure that I'm ready to stand before him and hear a job well done. I don't want your blood on my hand. So I'm bringing Christ to you and bringing you to Christ and it's up to you to do the rest. Mm, get me out of the way, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need a word. I need God to make sense of some of this stuff that I'm going through. I'm at a breaking point. I'm tired and I'm studying. I'm showing up. I'm serving. And it still don't make sense. Can I tell you this? Training. That's all it is. Training. Mm -hmm. We need a revelation of his will. Ah, Lord, what is your will in all this? You keep waking me up. I thought last night I was going to quit and give up. Uh, I went to bed with the hopes of not waking up, but you're waking me up. You keep waking me up, God. Why you keep waking me up? Why you keep giving me another chance? Why you keep giving me new grace? Why you keep giving me new mercy, God? What is he trying to do to me, God? Seek God for a revelation. Because if he didn't want you to wake up, he'd have let you stay asleep. Never to wake up. But he keep waking you up because he got an assignment for you. Uh, Paul said, I kept the faith. <laughs> I finished my course. Paul said, I ain't got nothing else to do, baby. He said, I've done everything. Oh, my God, I've done everything I was assigned to do. The Bible says, God said, I know the plans that I have for you. That's the assignment. Ah, you got to seek God for revelation concerning your assignment. All of us have an assignment. And it ain't just getting an education. That's one side. Your education is connected to your spiritual assignment. And so some of us that's graduated and we old. Now you say, okay, I got the education. I got the degrees. But I still don't know my spiritual assignment. Because can I help you understand something? I'm going to teach you something early, young men and one woman of God. When you understand and you are operating your spiritual assignment, life is more fuller. Life has more meaning. Oh, my God, I'm trying to help somebody, my God. So it's critical, my God, that you get a revelation concerning your assignment in life. Many of us is wondering in the world because we don't know what our assignment is and we won't sit still. And all the things and situations and circumstances that God is using to reveal to us our purpose and our assignment, my God, we are aborting. We are turning our back on the things that God is trying to reveal to us to get us in assignment, to get us in, our, in his plan that he has for our life. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's will that prevail. You're frustrated because you're trying to do your will. Yes, God gave you the dream, but it ain't time for it to manifest. Ask Joseph. Yes, you anointed the king. Yes, you anointed the king, but it ain't time for you to take the office of a king. See, we're trying to, my God, create this. He taught us wisdom. It's my else. God show you something, you run off. I'm going to leave that alone. I can't even get out of point number one. Let me move. So you need instruction. You need revelation. Also, you need wisdom. Write these down. I want to give you these because you need this in the midst of a breaking point. You need in wisdom. You need the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, y'all, is the mind of Christ. Let this man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Get revelation. Get wisdom concerning what you're going through. Don't just sit up there and suffer and you don't want to take time to seek, my God, God, for what you need to cross over. Oh, my God. Uh, mm. uh, point number two. I'm, sh I'm shifting. Let me get to point two. Come on. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Uh, did you learn some principles about how to pray? Keep your prayer. You got to be persistent. You got to use wisdom. You got to rest your faith that he's an unchangeable, anchored God. Come on. You need revelation. My God, David understood it. That's why in the midst of what he's going through, he did not allow himself to disconnect from his source. Ah, God is David's power source. God is our power source. If I plug some up into the socket, it's going to produce. If I unplug it, it ceases from being productive. Many of us is plugging in for an hour and then we unplugging the rest of the week. I can't get nobody to say nothing. All right, there. that's why you ain't got no power to say no when the flesh and trials come up against you. Oh my God, pain produces power, baby. Pain produces power. The pain that you experience in God trying to produce power. Ah, no, you don't understand. Neither do I understand everything. But the pain produces power. God Kenny is trying to produce power in you. Yes, we got too many powerless Christians. Ain't got no power. You can't even pray a headache up off of you. Yes, Gotta take 18 appeals, my God, just to get my God. Hey, my God, somebody give God a hand in the church. Power of God. Power of God. Pastor Neil Ellis, my God, uh, Dean brought a book back from the Bahamas. He talked about the in-between. I'm going to put a series together. My God, it's the in-between stuff. The waiting period in between the manifestation. That's what gets us. We don't want to wait. David said, I waited. 
with anticipation. I waited. It's the in-between seasons. Oh, it's when God spoke it, but you ain't seeing nothing manifest. It's when God said it and all held and broke loose. And when he, what you had a dream about and when he showed you, my God, my natural life don't line up. God, what you doing? You told me I was going to do this, my God. But you didn't tell me I had to go through this to do this. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Hey, my God. I got something for y'all, baby. It don't make sense to in-between. David is in an in-between situation right now. He don't understand what's going on, but he's doing principles. He's praying. He's staying connected. He's seeking revelation. He's seeking instruction. He's seeking wisdom. He's staying persistent. Oh, my God, his hope is resting in the unchanging God. Did y'all get all those? And then he shifts, my God. Oh, my God, number two, point two, you got to determine to persevere. It takes a made-up mind to do the will of the Father. Paul said all those that desire to live godly, they're going to suffer persecution. If you ain't got your mind made up in this hour, you ain't going to survive, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be determined. Oh, my God, like Zacchaeus. The Bible says he was short in stature like me, baby. But Jesus was coming his way, Tiki. And the Bible says, my God, the crowd, a lot of y'all, he was short. They say he was a midget. My God, he was short, but he, instead of him making excuses... Instead of him justifying why he can't get to see Jesus. The Bible says Zacchaeus, brother Larry, ran ahead of the crowd because he was short in stature. Clammed up a tree because he didn't want to miss Jesus. Some of y'all ain't desperate enough. Some of y'all ain't willing to do what it takes to see Jesus, my God. The woman with this blood, she crawled till she got to Jesus. Come on, the man that sat by the side of the road screamed when they said, shut up. He screamed louder. What are you willing to do? How determined are you to see your deliverance? How determined are you to see your kids set free? How determined are you to see your generation restored? You got to get determined. And quit criticizing the people that is determined, like me. Oh, my God, when God gives you assignment, he gives you passion for your assignment. I know where my assignment is. That's why I'm passionate. It's to seek and save that which is lost. 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 Peter, seek and save that which is lost. It takes one to reach one. Who waiting on you to get in your assignment? You got to be determined. You got to be determined. Oh my God. I don't know how many times I done quit, but I'm still determined. I got to keep that nevertheless. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Psalms 27 13 says, My God, and yet I'm confident, David said, in the midst of everything that's going on, the storm, people lying on me, talking about me, things I understand, things I don't understand. David said, Yet I remain confident. See, David kept a right perspective in the midst of what he was going through. Perspective is critical. Perspective, keeping the right perspective in the midst of storms and trials and at a breaking point in life is critical. Oh my God, for the outcome. Ooh, Jesus. Let me, let me move, let me move. I'm gonna remain confident, David said. Yeah, yeah. He said, he said, yet I am confident I will see the, the Lord's goodness while I'm here on earth. See, David lived in the midst of a breaking point, in the midst of point of no return. David lived with an anticipation. He was expecting God to move. He was expecting God to move. In the midst of what he was going through, are you expecting God to move? Are you waking up saying, okay, I know what I'm going through, but I'm expecting God. You know what moves God? Faith. Dependency. Proper position. Proper focus. These type of things move the hand of God. The only thing that unlocks heaven, resources, is faith. That's why he says without faith it's impossible to receive from God. Without faith, many of us right now in this season are point of no return. And we feel like we're in a breaking point because God is trying to build and teach you how to access heaven by faith. In Egypt, they didn't have to use faith, Sharon. They had furrow, a physical furrow, providing everything. Then when they went to training, wilderness, God provided everything. Now they're over in Canaan and God said, I ain't giving you nothing. You're going to get me and access me through faith. See, you're trying to hold God to that third. You want God to give you everything without doing anything. And when he don't provide, that ain't real. I tried that. You give $5 and think you want to get a million dollars overnight. <laughs> takes faith. See, when you operate in your assignment, baby, it takes faith to exercise in your assignment. Yeah. 
David was determined. Write this down. Be willing to stay. That's part of being determined. Be willing to stay. No matter what you understand and what you don't understand. Be willing to stay. Be willing to stay. Be willing to stay with God. Be willing to hang on in there. Uh, it takes a made up mind. <laughs> oh my God, it takes a real yes down in your soul. Are you willing to stay? Are you willing to stay, my God? Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, are you willing to stay? Oh my God. Mm. One of the most powerful things about coming to your breaking point is that you will discover what David discovered. David says, my God, he, he was about to faint or give up. Which one are you in right now? Where you at right now in position of your mind? Are you about to faint? Are you about to give up? Yeah. Are you about to fold and resign on God right now? Let's say loud for a minute because I ain't got that much left. Where are you at? What David said, I would have fainted if I have not desired, paraphrasing, to see the goodness of the Lord. In due season, you shall reap if you faint. Nah. Are you ready to resign on God? Have you tried to shift from covenant to contract? Are you ready to go back? Being told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Waiting on Pharaoh to feed you. Waiting on Pharaoh to tell you when to take a shower. Waiting on Pharaoh when to tell you to drink. Waiting on Pharaoh to say, Master, can I go to bed now? Master, can I use the bathroom now? Are you want to go back to that? Are you want to go over here? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where's going down at? <laughs> yeah, straight up. Were you sitting over here, my God, in luxury? in blessings, in overflow, in strength, in focus, in faith, knowing how to access, using keys to access and unlock in heaven what you need in the natural. See, it's a different mindset to go from there to her, baby. You can't have this mind, that mindset over her. See, many of us, my God, oh my God, it, it, it's free physically, but we ain't free spiritually. Oh my God. So you got to transition from that mindset to this mindset. This mindset is dependent on access and faith. I mean, heaven by faith. That man said over there, my God, I'm still with the sermon. It's dependent on man providing everything for him. So when you get over here, you're in Canaan now. Instead of you looking vertical, independent vertical, you're still dependent horizontal. You want a pastor to do it for you. You want your wife to do it for you. You want somebody, you feel like everybody owe you something. See, that's a poverty mentality in freedom. This is heavy, man. This is some heavy stuff right here, man. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give God a hand. I'm sure God is. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, go on, God. Give God a hand. Ooh, Jesus. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, it's going to require a different level of faith. You got to keep, no matter how, how tragic the situation is, God is moving. God is moving. Look today and say, God is moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You must have the right perspective. As I told y'all, perspective is everything in the midst of what you're going through. How you see stuff. Right. Just like Jesus said, be, be careful how you hear and what you hear. How do you, how you see and what you're going through? Do you see it as God punishing you or do you see it as a stepping stone? Do you see it as God punishing you and whooping you or do you see, my God, my God, yeah, even God, do you see it as the enemy? Everything you're going through ain't the enemy. Right. What's, what perspective do you have about the stuff you're going through? That's critical to advancing. Getting the right perspective. It's critical. When God Albright gave you, when God through uh, uh, Vartez gave you that word, my God, and you went, you had the right perspective about that word, and you exercised, my God, obedience, and then God unlocked and moved in your favor. Perspective. God is trying to change a lot of our perspective. Can I help you? A lot of our perspective is cracked because it was formulated in religion. We had people that went before us. My God, it was supposed to do. We, did, we got a lot of church in us, and we got very little Christ inside of us. And our perspective about God is wrong. God is not standing, my God, over heaven with a big old boy ready to break your head off every time you make a mistake. That's why Paul said there is no condemnation. Quit condemning yourself. Get the right perspective about God. Quit, for, quit allowing your old crack belief system about God because it's wrong. God is a good, benevolent king. God is merciful. God is graceful. God loves you. 
He loves you, but he, don't, he hates sin. And he gives you and I grace and mercy, my God, to change. That's why you got to thank God for his grace. He gives you grace and seasons to get it right. Don't use God's grace to continue practicing doing sin. When he's Savior, you think like that. When he's Lord, you give it up. I said, when he's Savior, you think like that. God going to forgive me. God is merciful. God is a benevolent king. So you just keep practicing sin. But when you become Lord, you renounce that. Because you don't want to share your loyalty. Oh, my God, with no other thing. We got to shift from worshiping the created thing and worshiping the creator other thing. Oh, I know it's heavy. I want to shout, but I'm going to teach you something. And so, my God, uh, 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 you got to stay determined. This is how you stay determined. Write this down. Write down our faith. In verse 13, David says, that though he had the circumstances, uh, he believed. Uh, though he was in drama, in verse 12, he still believes. Uh, anyone can have faith while, while all is well, but what do you do when the bottom falls out? Faith. The bottom has fell out. You walk into your job and they give you a pink slip. Or they tell you, you might got to take this seven package, my God, you've been there 20 years and now you're devastated because you didn't, pre you didn't prepare for famine. When you got plenty, you got to prepare for famine. That's a biblical principle. When you got plenty, you got to prepare for famine because things change. So you've been getting this good paycheck for a long time. You ain't putting nothing up. You bought everything you wanted, everything you lusted out there, you bought it, and you didn't put nothing back for a rainy day. And now you done walked into your job. My God, they never told anybody. They never sent out no email, never gave no, in, uh, no memo or nothing. My God, they said, you know what? We're closing the company down. We're moving. And you are not prepared. That's the point of no return. It's a breaking point. Don't squander away. Don't squander away your increase. Learn how to deny yourself things for a rainy day. That's just good. Amen, Sharon. Amen. Amen. Is your faith anchored enough when the bottom falls off? When the bottom falls out. What's going to happen? When you don't get your way, what you going to do? When he or she move out of position, what you going to do? They said they wanted to be with you, but all of a sudden they decided they don't want to be with you. What you going to do? You train them for the position. I mean, for your position. You, you, you train them for your position. What you going to do? It is real life. Good stuff. Because many people, because I got a pause for this church, is at a point of no return. You have to make some decision to go over or you're going back. And many of us is ready to faint and quit on God. And I'm trying to arrest that mindset now. So you don't, I look up and you know we're around. I'm saying, where's such and such? Where's such and such? What happened? What happened? I need you to survive. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Focus. focus. Write down focus. focus. You got to stay determined by faith and focus. You can never see what's wrong. I mean, can you see what's wrong or can you see God moving in your situation? Uh, is your focus all about what God should be doing? All you see is problems. You don't see lessons. You don't see training in what you're going through. What's your perspective about what you're going through? Mm, mm, mm. God is moving, though. There is stuff you see now you couldn't see five years ago. Because we was not mature enough to see it then. Oh, my God, I, think, I was thinking about that, my God. Oh, Lord, I thank God that he reveals stuff in stages. He revealed things to us as we need it. He don't show you everything. That's that in-between season. When God said, go, Abraham, leave that people, leave the familiar, leave your family. I ain't finna tell you, I'm gonna show you as you go. The Bible says, as they went, the lepers, they was healed. See, you sitting around waiting on God. God said, now, as you move, as you go, my God, as you obey, that's when you get the miracle. That's when you get the healing. That's when you get the healing. As you move. Some of us just sitting right here in freedom, 
with an Egypt mentality, waiting on God to do everything. Yeah. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir, master. No, 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 no. Obedience is required in freedom. Yeah. Obedience. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you got to have faith, you got to have focus, and, and then write down future. In that order. Faith, focus, and future. Where is your faith right now? Remember, point number two is you got to stay determined. So that means faith, focus, and future. Where is your faith right now? Concerning what you're going through. How are you seeing what you're going through? Are you seeing it as punishment? Or are you seeing it as lessons? Stepping stones. PC perspective is critical to promotion. Quickly. Sometimes we can stay too long because we got the wrong perspective about what we're experiencing. And God trying to use this stuff to train you for promotion quickly. God have need of thee, and he's trying to get you prepared for where he's taking you. And so he's trying to move quickly, but we're squandering away opportunities to grow and to develop and to be prepared for our assignment. So when you're at that breaking point, you got to keep the right faith, right perspective, and you got to keep the right focus. Focus on God. We teach in discipleship one, whatever you focus on, the longest become the strongest. What are you focusing on the longest in the course of a 24-hour day? How are you perceiving, and my God, the things you are experiencing in life? It's critical to advancement. It's critical to development. Are you with me so far? Come on, is God helping anybody this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. So your faith, where your faith at right now? Where your focus at right now? David says he, he, he had drama all around him, but David kept the right faith, the right focus, and he kept his eyes on his future. He said, he said I'm going to see God move in the land of the living. In the midst of everything he was going through, in the midst of the breaking point, he kept the right faith, he kept the right focus, and he was determined and focused on his future. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can I help you understand something? When you make your life all about you, you're going to quit. When you make life about others, you'll keep pushing. Because <laughs> it's easy for me to quit when it's about me. But when I know I got people depending on me, I just can't quit. <laughs> Oh, uh, when you make life about you, you quit. <laughs> but when it's about somebody else, my God, you push through. Because you will tell yourself, who in my life going to suffer if I return back to Egypt? Who, who going to stay sick if I don't stay free? Who ain't going to never come out if I don't stay in freedom? See, you begin to think about other people that gives you, oh my God, and, and you something to rise up on the inside of you, my God. And you begin to push on through when it's about somebody else other than you. You will quit on you. Many of us has quit on ourselves, thank you, Holy Ghost. Many of us has quit on ourselves. You got to find another cause to live for other than just you. Because you quit on you. That's why the second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. It's hard to quit on somebody that you know that's dependent on you. Some of you mamas that's been doing it by yourself, you can't quit because your baby's dependent on you. You can't quit because your grandkids depend on you. See what I'm saying? Let me bring some context. See, it's easy to quit. If it was just you, you ain't got to go to work. But if somebody depending on you getting their paycheck, you're going to get your butt up and go to work. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. David said, my God, uh, all this drama going on around me. He still saw God, perspective, right perspective, right focus, right faith, moving in the land of the living. When you have been through stuff that could have killed you, you give God the glory just because you're still here. Yeah. See, David has seen God move too many times in his life. God had, David had moved from out of court worship to inner court intimacy. And he has seen God move. He has seen God do great exploits through David. We know what King David was. See what I'm trying to say? David been on death doors. David's life was always under the gun. Even Apostle Paul, he was always under the gun. But when you've been on death doors, when you've seen God make death be still, when you've seen God cause your enemies to bless you, come on somebody, oh, when you've seen the scriptures unfold in your life, my God, it, it does something to your psyche. It does something to your mindset, my God. Your worship is 
is different. Your studying is different. Your prayer is different. Your tenacity is different because you know that God did it then and he's going to do it now. All I got to do is remain faithful. All I got to do is keep the right posture. All I got to do is keep my faith anchored, my God. He did it once, he's going to do it again, my God. It's something about somebody that understands that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, my God. It's something about somebody, my God, who been through the muck and the mire, Clay. It's something about somebody, my God, that needed a miracle and God did it. It's something about somebody, my God, that had crawled to, to the hem of his garment and got healed. It's something about somebody different, my God, when they didn't got to 11... 59 and God showed up at 12 midnight. It's something about somebody, my God. Oh my God, that God is set free and delivered. I said, it's something about somebody that has seen God move. Somebody give God some glory. Mm. And my last point is I get y'all out of here. Oh, it's something about that person that know God at a different level. See, some of us just know him. I'm sorry. It's a whole lot of people in there, but some of us know him on the outer court. But then you got a remnant of people that know him in that secret place. Oh, my God. Oh, they long to get in his presence. They long to get to their Bible. They wake up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and before they grab the phone, they grab their constitution. Oh, my God. There's a people, my God, that longs to get with God and sit with the king. Oh, there's a people in this church, my God, that can't wait to get their alabaster box open so they can get it to the king. Oh, my God. It's something different about a spirit feel grateful. Those who've been forgiven much, they love much. Nathan, did you catch that? Nate, did you catch that? Those who've been forgiven much, they love much. Don't never let nobody's son criticize you for your love for God. People that God had touched and moved, that God had put his hands on them and got his hands on them. There's something different about it. They got a different aroma. They got a different swag. Oh, my God, I promise you, my God, you can always tell the people that's on out of court. They ain't got nothing to give God but flesh. No hunger. A cry of desperation. A cry of desperation. A cry of thanksgiving. A cry of saying, God, thank you. God, I love you. God, you didn't have to, but you did. Thank you for being a way maker when you're my God, when there was no way. I was at my breaking point. I lost my mind, but Christ gave me his, my God. What treatment centers couldn't do, you did, my God. Thank you for restoring my marriage. Thank you for restoring my kids. So, hey, 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 hey. Thank you. Somebody just tell him, thank you. Oh, don't pay me no man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Oh, my God. Mm, there's something about a person that's grateful. Do anybody got a reason to say thank you? I said, do anybody got a reason to say thank you? Oh, Jesus. See, I got to be careful. Let me go back to the sermon and get you out of here. See, I got to make sure I keep the right perspective, uh, Tiki, because of what I just seen. I said, do anybody got a reason to be thankful? And y'all don't see what I see. But you got people sitting in the house of the Lord like this. They can't find no reason to give God no glory. See, that right there set me off because you weren't grateful. But I need to talk to somebody that's going to give God the glory. Oh, he's been too good to me. Hey! hey. I can't let you rob me. I can't let you rob me. Hey! hey. Oh, ah, warrior. Sit down on God. Like we on the club, on the block, on the corner. Sitting up real prideful, men and women. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just that one. I'm coming out to that spirit. When you're in a point of no return, you got to do this last point. I'm going to release you. You got to develop a posture of anticipation. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we got to be reminded. 
Sometimes we got to be reminded. But we got a reason. Amen. Psalm 27, 14 says, David says, I'm through. He waited patiently for the Lord. He said, be brave and be courageous while you're waiting. Wait patiently for the Lord. David says, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. This particular word, let me give you some substance. Uh, for waiting connotes either tense or eager or patient anticipation. Tense, eager, and patient anticipation. How do you get tense and eager and then tell me to be patient? Because it's a different type of posture. It's a different type of anticipation. This anticipation is, is, is resting in God's unchangeable hand. You know it's going to be okay. You don't know when, but you're going to wait with an expectation. Because I know he's going to do it. If he brought me to it, he's going to bring me through it. See, it's a different mindset when you've seen God move. In your life. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, it also, this, this wait means you got to be productive. See, if you wait in anticipation, you got to remain productive. It means to serve while you wait. See, some of you sit down waiting, but you ain't in the, you, you, you're not in the posture, the position to serve. You sit in here waiting because you said you didn't pray, you didn't fast, and you may even sown a seed. That's good. That's external. Now you got to quiet your spirit and wait for God internally. But while you're waiting, you got to serve. While you're waiting, you got to be found faithful. The Bible says God shows himself faithful to those that are faithful. See what I'm trying to say? There is a faithful work that's attached to waiting. You got to remain persistent. You got to stay determined. Oh, my God. And you got to remain faithful to that what God has called you to do. You got to produce. Write this down. Produce without excuse. Quit making excuses why you can't produce. I'm waiting on the Lord. So you're just going to sit down on God and, and, and be unproductive and unfruitful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Produce without excuse. David said, I'm waiting, so I'm going to produce. And I ain't going to make no excuses because I'm at the point of breaking. I'm at the point of no return. My enemies is lying on me. People are talking about me. They don't acknowledge me like they used to now. they tripping with me on my job. I'm going through hell in my marriage and all this. I'm still going to wait and I'm going to produce without making excuses. Mm, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. This also means you need wisdom. Write that down. And I'm going on. God allowed us to make wise decisions. This word waits deals with pursue. It deals with being reliable. Are you reliable while you're waiting? Come here, Pastor Champ. Let me close it. While you're waiting, turn around, son. While you're waiting on God. Woo, shakabo, shake it out of shanda. While you're waiting on God. Are uh, you producing without excuses? While you're waiting on God, y'all look at me. While you're waiting, will you remain faithful? Can God drop some weight on you? Stay right there. While you're waiting. Can God trust you in a season of in-betweens? Can God trust you to wait with expectation, anticipation, with eagerness, intenseness? Can you wait and expect God and serve God with integrity while you're waiting? Can you be found faithful? Can you walk in a, de a deeper level of love? Uh, can you per persevere? Can you push through while you're waiting? Can God drop some weight on you? Is your foundation anchored enough in faith, focus, and on your future that God can drop and reveal? Oh my God, your future and your plan, his plan for your life. Can God drop some weight on you while you're waiting? Can God trust you with what you're asking him for? Can you handle what God is trying to give you. Can you handle the abundance of the kingdom? Can you handle real freedom? Can you handle being married? Can you handle being a mama? Can you handle my God promotion? Can you handle, can God give you some weight while you're waiting? Are you waiting in fear or faith? Are you angry and bitter while you're waiting on God? Are you always complaining while you're waiting on God? See, he can't give you no weight because you're complaining. Are you bitter and you're angry? Oh my God, why are you waiting? Because you're focusing more on, on, the, on the point of breaking and on the point of no return. You're focusing more on the pain, the hell, the enemies, the people, and more than God. Your focus ain't on God, your focus is on people. And you're bitter. It's the husband's fault, it's the wife's fault. 
It's the white man's fault. It's the black man's fault. My God, you're not waiting. You're making excuses while you're waiting. Listen to the spirit of the God. Oh my God, it's the body of Christ everywhere. You want everything, but God can't give you no weight. He can't give you no weight. He can't set that on you. Because you're not tense. You're not waiting with expectation. You're not eager saying, God, this is my day. When you wake up, my God, you wake up in bitterness, not in hope. God, this might be my day. This is the day where the, the trouble become a bridge. Oh, this is where, oh my God, this might just be the day that he turned everything around. My God, I got an anticipation. Oh my God, I got, I'm, on my, I'm ready, baby. I'm bouncing, I'm bobbing, I'm weaving, though he dies. This might be my day, baby, where I get my breakthrough. Oh my God, see, that right there draws the spirit. That right there draws God to you because they waited in faith. They waited in hope. They got a lifestyle going behind their weight, my God. They're excited. God is close to a thankful heart, to a grateful heart. Many of you is in between, but you're bitter. You're angry. You're frustrated. God said, I can't do nothing with you. Ah, you're too bitter. You're too angry. Learn how to wait until God changes. I'm going to be right here until my situation changes. My foundation class, my foundation class, if you hear, you know what you are supposed to do. So I ain't gonna bang you. Get up and let's do it. Bring that to the altar. When you feel released, bring it to the altar. God has spoke. Are you reliable? Can God depend on you? Can God depend on you? Can God depend on you while he allow you to wait? It's God that's allowing you to wait. It's God that's holding it up for you. It's God said, I'm trying to train you, daughter. I'm trying to train you, son. Oh, my God. Let me teach you how to wait. Because when you get in freedom, he ain't going to give you everything like he did when you was in training in the wilderness. He ain't going to provide water. He ain't going to give food from heaven. You're going to have to wait in faith. you got to wait with expectation. you got to have a healthy anticipation for God. Who is God talking to in this church? Quit trying to create this my else. Quit trying to work your own will and work God's will. At the point of no return. You either going over or you going away. You going over or you going away. You going over to the other side or you going to get away from God? Who is God talking to in the church? The altar is open. The altar is open. I know it ain't just these. Oh my God, because I know your stories. <laughs> oh, some of you are dealing with stuff that has happened to you when you was young. You're dealing with stuff that's happened to you since you've been born. Oh my God, that stuff is what you need to pray. Learn how to wait with anticipation. Lay it down. Lay it down. 